Hey guys, Josh with Link Spider here with a couple of quick tips on how to get your Link Spider ready for a net backstop. Now, several years ago, we designed Link Spider to work primarily with chain link fence, but that does not mean that it will not work with netting and we actually use it quite a bit. There are a couple of precautions that we recommend that you take both for the protection of the net as well as for the protection of your camera. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is dipping the claws in something rubberized uh, in the event of a direct impact. Now, we go to great lengths to deburr all of our surfaces. They are laser cut, which means they leave a nice little knife edge on the back. Um, and we knock that off in a deburr process. But even though the edges are round, uh, it's still metal and metal on nylon in an impact, metal's gonna win. So what we recommend is to use a product called Plasti Dip. Now, when you go to any hardware store, Lowe's, Ace, all of the big ones, uh, you're gonna come to a couple of options. Uh, there's a dip style, which is what we recommend. And then there's this uh, aerosol spray, which we do not recommend. Now there's another use for this uh, that we might get into later about the back of the product. Uh, and it's what we would use this for. But for this exercise, for getting it net ready, this is what we will use. And uh, I, it's sort of a love-hate relationship with this stuff because it works very, very well. Unfortunately, um, I've not found a very good way to um, sort of protect it, uh, keep it from drying out. It's a solvent-based material. And when you use it the first time, it's kind of runny. And if you drip it on your kitchen table, your wife will be upset with you. But anyhow, what you wanna do is you want to um, give it a good shake before you start using it to mix all that stuff up and hope that the lid does not come off while you're doing this. Um, you want to be wise and make sure that you do this before you crack the lid opening like I did tonight. But after you've done that, um, it should be ready for use. It is kind of a sticky mess, but the benefit is, is that Plasti Dip is intended to be removable. Uh, a lot of these guys that do some of these uh, hot rod cars will temporarily Plasti Dip their cars to a certain color, and then it just peels right off. And that's sort of why we recommend this. Um, your claws are designed for chain link fence. And if you have a netting environment, um, it will work very well doing this. But what you may find is it may not leave you enough clearance to do a chain link fence. And if that's the case, simply peel it off. Um, so what we're going to show you is how uh, Plasti Dip recommends it, which is uh, about five seconds per inch and we're gonna go in about two inches, and if you can do math like me, that comes to about 10 seconds. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start this, and we're gonna go in nice and slow, and I'm actually not going to count because I know that that 10 seconds is just a suggestion. But we're gonna go about this pace, and we're gonna exit about the same pace, and then when we get to the end, we're just gonna kinda lay it like this a few times. Now, Plasti Dip will dry um, to the touch in about 30 minutes. Uh, it's probably not usable for about four hours, um, but I would recommend overnight. So if, you go, if you're going to a tournament and you know that the, uh, that the backstops are gonna be net, I would do it the night before. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna set this right here and it will mark the back, but we're not as concerned about the back. We're mostly concerned about this inside edge right here. The other thing that I will tell you about Plasti Dip is it is really intended to be put on in a, in a multiple coat layer. So if you find that this first layer does not give you enough protection, if it doesn't coat all of the edges, let it sort of dry to a matte finish and let it dry to where it's, you know, it's not visibly wet and then go and repeat the process. We're not gonna show it here today, but, but the spray is very much that way, only amp amplified even more. You will not want to lay this on thick. You will want to lay it on to where it's very, very splotchy. Uh, a chemical bond is created when you use Plasti Dip and so you will spray that on until it's splotchy. Uh, you let it sit about 15 minutes and then you'll put another layer on that's fairly light. And about the first, I don't know, four or five layers, you wanna be pretty light. Then you can start laying it on a little thicker and probably you're gonna use something in the range of eight to 10 layers. But the reason why you wanna do that is because 
it creates that chemical bond. It creates like a solid sheet that will just peel right off. Um, and that's how this stuff is supposed to work. Now I recommend, we're kind of letting this dry. I recommended uh, this earlier for the back. We've had some folks, and I have to be honest with you, I've not really been able to reproduce this, but we've had some folks say that there have been people that have complained that at a certain time of day, the lynx spider will, will produce a glare. And I know that you guys have probably dealt with some of these coaches as well. There are certain people that are gonna complain no matter what. In my opinion, glare is not an issue, but maybe that's climate. Maybe I'm from the Midwest. Maybe your son in California, your son in Florida is different than our son here in the Midwest. But if you find that to be the case, Plasti Dip actually works very well for this. <clears throat> Lay, again, eight to 10 coats across the backside and, and you can leave it on there. Uh, if you find that it starts to tear up and get a little bit ugly, peel it off, do another one. Um, it may actually help you, all right? So anyhow, going back to this, uh, it's still very, very wet, uh, but overnight it will start to thicken up and become usable. The other thing that we're gonna recommend is that in a net environment, we recommend flipping the hooks around, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pop this guy out, you're gonna flip it around this way, you're gonna put it back together and you're gonna mount it this way. Now we only recommend this in a net environment because if you do this in a chain link environment, the claw actually could come into the field and it won't be as protected. But in a net environment, you're gonna hang this, um, you're gonna hang this from a really tight net and in the event of an impact, it's gonna pull away and it's gonna make this uh, hold on a little bit tighter. Okay, so we recommend doing that all the way around. The other thing that we recommend is that you actually use your link spider in an inverted fashion. This right here was designed to place a GoPro right behind it. Now, I will tell you that if you line your link spider up on a net and there's a net piece right here, it's gonna be very difficult to get it out of the shot. So when you shoot this way, you're gonna to wanna to locate your link spider in such a way that this window is clear. The reason why we recommend this, okay? Link Spider again was designed for chain link fence. It's of a certain size that it can withstand an impact. It will not get dislodged from the fence and it will not be damaged on chain link fence. Netting offers absolutely no protection. Protection. It does not distribute, distribute the load in any way, shape or form. And so if you get hit right here on a net, it's more than likely going to bend. Now, the one thing that Net provides that Chainlink doesn't is the fact that it's gonna move. So it's not going to destroy it. But if you had a camera mounted right here and you take a shot right here, Link Spider is not going to offer you any protection. And we don't want your equipment getting damaged. So we recommend uh, putting the spider slider about right here, having your GoPro uh, or whatever camera you use shoot through this window so that if you were to get an impact here, it would not damage your camera. It is more than likely going to bend this. This is a 14 gauge stainless steel. It's flat. Uh, because of the length, it would have some leverage. However, we've bent several of them. They all bend back uh, and they do not get dislodged from the fence or the net if mounted properly. The one last suggestion that I might offer you is to mount your claws a little bit closer to the base plate on a net situation than you would shoot in chain link fence. In chain link fence, you're gonna mount somewhere out like this net, uh, you're going to want to minimize the amount of net movement you can, so we recommend getting these a little bit closer. We also recommend that you kind of go with the netting up and down, side to side, um, and keep your footprint as small as you can. All right, so we talked about Plasti Dip. Um, Plasti Dip offers the protection from cut. We talked about flipping them around. We talked about shooting through this window. And if you're dealing with a crazy coach that says, you're glaring at my picture, then maybe you want to consider Plasti Dip in the back so that it reduces that glare. If you guys have more suggestions or questions, feel free to reach me on the internet, josh at linkspider.com. Thanks.